Hello, the gentleman gamer here, and today I'm playing Eve Online on the test server. And I logged in today uh, to try to make a fit for the jack that I would like to use when it comes off, uh, comes out in the next release in early June. And um, I, as I was messing with it, I, I looked at the hull. I'm like, ah, people will probably put light missiles on this and uh, try to kite with it. And it, obviously, it's since it's a missile platform, light missiles are an option. It's it's definitely viable. Um, I think most people would tr tr use it that way, but I, I don't really like kiting. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I want to try something else with this. I wanted to put rockets on it, and just, you know, in your face, you know, shooting things. <laughs> um, but that uh, I think I, I made a pretty good fit, and I think a lot of the bonuses, especially the new one they put on, I think will help uh, to use Jackdaw in that fashion. So let's look into this the bonuses real fast, so you get an idea what we're dealing with here. And they've changed these, so uh, the first one's the 5% bonus light missile launcher, rocket rate of fire, pretty standard, you know, increased DPS as you level it up. But the second one here has been changed. Before it was a, a shield, uh, like uh, EHP bonus, uh, which I got, they got rid of, I'm assuming because it was just too OP maybe. Uh, but this one's very interesting. A 15% reduction in missile launcher rate uh, reload time. Now that's really cool because, you know, Missile launchers get about as a 10 second reload time, but with this up to level five, I think in the math it's like two and a half seconds, maybe two seconds, uh, for reloading, and that's way better than 10 seconds. So eight second difference, you know, in PvP, eight seconds is a long time, and if I want to use this for, as a rocket platform, you know, a, a difference between two and 10 seconds is you know the difference between dying and not dying, so definitely useful and I think it will help the rocket platform be more viable with this bonus so I hope they keep it <laughs> uh, the next ones are pretty standard I think for T3 Desis 5% reduction in module heat damage taken um, I think all Desis get 50% bonus to whatever type of damage platform they are lasers or artillery or, or projectiles and they also get 95% reduction in scan probe launcher CPU requirements so that's all good uh, now the defense modes and the other modes here, we'll go through as I go through the fit. So let's close this up and open the fitting window. And currently we are in defense mode. So we'll look at the, the mid, since this is a shield tank ship, we'll look at the the, um, the mid slots, and that's where all the tank is. So we'll look at the, that real quick. I have an EM ward amplifier 2, uh, limited adaptive and vulnerability field, uh, micro ultra 2, a scram. And these two uh, medium, shield, uh, medium and silly shield boosters. So as you can see with the, the resist mod on, I have a 73, 80, 78, and 75 uh, resist profile across the board. So it's not bad. Uh, it's not like the best I've seen. It's obviously you can get up to like high 80s maybe. But I think I'm more comfortable with this and having um, these two and silly shield boosters here. And the reason I put the, the medium uh, and silly shield boosters instead of a regular shield booster and the regular ship will just eat up cap uh, like bad <laughs> so uh, and uh, these ones are a little different they take charges uh, in this instance um, navy cap booster 75s and while they're using the charges they don't take up your capacitor so um, and also the one problem with them as well is that if you don't pay attention and it starts running without a, a booster in it it will eat up your cap so you get little little micromanaging there but I think the the, bone, uh, the benefit of it is totally worth the effort. And I put two here because if one once you run out of charges, it takes 60 seconds. It's a minute to charge um, to reload again. So I'm thinking, okay, use one, and then when that one goes down, use the other and reload the other, and hopefully, kind of playing one off the other. Hopefully, um, most if it gets really bad situation, obviously use both, and then you're in really big trouble. But hopefully, hopefully you can manage yourself well, and that doesn't happen. Um, but let's see here what else. So I mean, oh, down here as well we have uh, the micro drive. Now one of the problems with the micro warp drive is that it uh, it uh, also nerfs your cap, which is part of the reason why I put two initially shoot boosts there. Uh, but also it makes your signature way bigger. But in defense mode we do get a reduction in signature in uh, ship signature in general. So we're at 52 right now, and if we turn it on, you see 304. So that is bigger. Um, and you will be easier to hit, faster to target. So obviously using sparingly. In this case, as a rocket ship, I try to get to my target real fast. Um, leave it on for as long as I need to, to get catch to him, catch up to him. Turn it off, 
and then hopefully he has a micro warp drive on and this will turn off his micro warp drive and then the speeds will be more manageable to keep him in range for the rockets. So I think that's done for the fence mode. Let's take a look at uh, sharpshooter mode. Now sharpshooter mode should give us 66.6 .6 bonus to rocket and light missile velocity. Oh, that is a new noise. Interesting. I hope that wasn't too loud. Um, and also gives 100% bonus to sensor strength, target range, and scan resolution. So let's take a look at the rockets here. Uh, currently, at the moment, I have Rage rockets, and their DPS is 273.5. Not bad DPS for up close missiles, and the, because of the sniper mode, uh, not sniper, sharpshooter mode, <laughs> uh, it gives us 11 km. So that is actually some pretty good projection for rockets. Uh, that's actually that's, that's a pr uh, prime them for overheating. And we'll see, like most situations, you'll be overheating at least for the first target, unless you get more company. Then you have to manage your heat a little bit. As you can see, I was uh, not doing very well down here. Uh, now, with the well, for over prime for overheating is doing 321.7. So that's very, that's pretty good damage, I think, for a, for a rocket ship. And uh, I think you can eat up frigates pretty quickly with, with this with this amount of damage. Now let's uh, let's switch it real quick to the the longer range, uh, the javelin rockets. See, four second reload time. Boom! Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> now we're looking at what 182.1 DPS. Let's prime it for overheating. 214.3. And what's our range here? 20 km. That's that's, that's great. Um, that's not bad. And my missile skills aren't aren't maxed out. I I mostly went turrets. I'm, I'm actually leveling them up now. Uh, right after I, level, I finish and level up uh, <laughs> my medium turrets on, on TQ. Um, but 20 km flight time, uh, it's really good, I think. Uh, well, higher skills may go a little higher. Um, but if someone's trying to you know, like uh, orbit you at point range um, and trying to kite you that way, uh, 20 km, you're still within point range unless they're overheating it. But they can't, they can't continuously overheat it. So there is only a minimum amount of time they can engage you that far away without you able to cause damage to them. Of course, there's exceptions. Like if you're fighting a Garmer, they can point out farther than 20. Uh, or they have Lynx, which makes it even farther away. Um, so, but I think in most situations, uh, this range, you're able to fight most things and uh, not have issues. So that's very cool. All right, this took that off. And the other part of this is the sensor strength, target range, and scan resolution. So you see, this was 17, I believe. Now it's 34. So less, less, um, less issues getting jammed. No one likes getting jammed. So the higher this number, the better. Uh, obviously, 620, 687 gives you a lot easier to target frigates quicker. And for a rocket ship, you want to be able to target quickly and get on top of your uh, your target. So that's very good. And 137, 137 km is a long way uh, for targeting. But I think even if on a rocket ship is beneficial, because sometimes people put like surprise E war like damps on their uh, ships, and if uh, unbonus E war, th this high number will be useful. That way they can't like break your target lock, unless uh, like a two molluscs show up and then you're screwed. But <laughs> besides that, this high number will help you. All right, let's go to the last mode. The last mode is propulsion mode. Let's turn that on. Wow, that's, I, that does sound cool. I hope it's not too loud, though. I don't think I have an option how low I can make that. So, but now as in, we're in speed mode. It's, you know, obviously very well. I was gonna say very sleek, but as sleek as a Kaldari ship can be. <laughs> and it should give us here 33.3 maximum uh, to maximum velocity, and 66.6 .6 to ship inertia modifier. Now this actually been flipped. I think the other two uh, tactical destroyers, Matara and the Amar, have a 66.6 .6 to maximum velocity, and have a 33.3 ship inertia. So this one, the Jackdaw will be slower than the other two in propulsion mode, and I think in general as well. Uh, but this might be interesting as well because it makes it more nimble, more maneuverable. Um, so I, I think it might be good for the as a for, for a rocket platform and kiting too as well, being able to turn quickly even with a micro drive, or if you can, uh, you can fit a oversized afterburner. But it will make you more mobile, uh, more nimble. So that's good. Very interesting. I wonder how people are going to use that. But let's take a look at the actual speed we get from this. Uh, right now, in propulsion mode, without it being primed for overheating, you're going around a little over 2,000. We prime it for overheating. Uh, 
little below three. But yeah, so not really super fast. Um, that might be an issue uh, for the um, for the, the rocket setup here. Uh, a lot of frigates with micro warp drives on can go really, really fast. So I think that's the only problem I see with this, uh, with this fit exactly, it's trying to catch up with the enemy. So, but besides that, I think I think it's still viable. I like the fit. Um, uh, I, I actually, I'm curious if uh, maybe I should make it you now drop a, a ballistic control or put a drop one of these uh, core defense and put like uh, something that increases my speed because if you can't catch up to your target, there's no point, right? <laughs> so, but I think overall maybe some tweaks, but I think overall this could work. I think it'd be fun to fly. Um, but uh, that is the fit, guys. Uh, if you have if your own fits you've been trying on the test server, let me know. Put it in the comments. Um, tell, tell me what you think about mine or what thing I should change or whatever. Uh, but thanks for watching. If you like the video, leave a like. If you like the content, of course, subscribe and fly safe and fly brave.